Hey guys, it's Evan and it's a rainy June 2023 afternoon in this in the snake room. I got this guy, male three-year-old guy Anna. He's cruising. He's actually looking hungry. I'm gonna be a little careful because I've been digging around in my frozen feeder fridge. So I'm gonna pop him back in with not my hand. Boop, boop, boop. There you go, bud. Sorry, tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Just showing you some snakes because I know you guys like that. What do we have in here? Here's a little Argentine. You can tell they're all getting hungry because they all start coming out and waiting towards the front of the cages right around feeding day. But anyway, that's just a little uh, squirrel brain going on. But today I thought because I just spent a whole bunch of time completely vacuuming my snake room, that it'd be a great time. Actually, it's a terrible time, but I thought that it'd be a great time to make a video about all the substrates I use because then I'll need to vacuum again. Um, and I guess I'd just say, first of all, that with boa constrictors and substrates, it's highly personal. I think people use uh, tons of different things. I've been through um, the gamut, a lot of them. Um, I'm going to go with the four that I keep in stock just because to some degree you have to do simplicity and you're balancing things like, does it serve your purposes well? Is it um, easy to clean up and maintain? Is it easy to get and is it cheap? And the last one is, is it environmentally sustainable? So um, I guess those are the things. But just to say, um, people use tons of different things. I think that as long as the consensus is that is generally reptile safe, go ahead and experiment with it, with it if you want. I've gone through different things like peat moss. I've gone through different textures of coconut, like the, you know, the fine stuff, the coir. Gone through topsoil. I've gone through cypress mulch. Gone through plain newspaper. I've gone through paper towels. I've gone through rolls of different butcher block paper and stuff like that. And this is just kind of what I settle on because it worked for me. And and um, <clears throat> the purpose of substrates, I guess, is multifold. Uh, one is for hygiene, makes it easy to clean up and, uh, and um, just controls and absorbs liquids, keeps your animal from sitting in a pile of, of urine or something like that. Uh, and then the other big thing that I would say that substrates do is that they, um, they are your big play in how to control humidity in your cages. So... Um, as long as you are finding something that is readily accessible, affordable, reptile safe, um, allows you to keep things nice and clean, and also allows you to control your humidity, you're in the right realm. So I'll just tell you big picture. In all my cages, um, I use paper bottoms. Uh, my big, like, my, like, not my racks, but my actual cages. I use this paper. It's from U-Haul. It's uh, just cheap and convenient. And, and for whatever reason, this just seems to be the right perfect size to lay flat in these like 30-inch deep cages. Also these 40, uh, 48-inch wide cages. Also these three feet uh, deep cages. It's just for whatever reason, this size rectangle paper works really nice. You can uh, lay them out in different ways and it's super efficient. Um, in cages, I prefer paper on the bottom because... I find it takes quite a bit of mulch style substrate to cover the bottom. It's very hard to do a full clean out on them. You're, you're shoveling things out with a dustpan and you're also then having to vacuum them out. And I just find it easier overall for me with paper to control hygiene uh, in these large cages. In my bins, in my racks, I tend to use mulches, a, t a mulch substrate. And that's because... Um, it's a small area to cover. You don't need quite as much of it. And um, when you go to clean it out, you can just pull the tub out and dump it in the compost. So um, that's a big difference uh, between the two is in my cage bottoms, my bigger cages, I use paper. And in my racks, I use a coconut chunk product. So this is called Grow It. It's from Hydro Farm, which is a horticultural grade product. It's from um, a like specialty hydroponic growth store. Um, I pay like $14 to $15 a block for this now. It's gone way up uh since um the pandemic but i think it's still cheaper than most reptile versions uh it is easier for me to get locally and uh it is also i has advantage of it's not coming from a store with reptiles because i'm always a little bit afraid about mites uh or other things coming in with my substrate so i tend not to buy them from like expos or from reptile stores so this comes from a horticultural hydroponic store it's uh uh, it, what is that? The organic certification. And when you decompress it, it breaks down just like a chunk coconut reptile product. So that's just what I use. It's Grow It brand Cocoa Planting Chips by Hydro Farm. Uh, and just in case you guys have never known this tip, the way to rehydrate and decompress it, cut just along the top. 
so that you can open this up and it basically turns into a plastic bag. Pull that piece of paper up and fill it with water once in the sink and just let that absorb and run out through the bag. And when you're done with that, let it sit overnight then put it in a bin like this and it'll fall apart. Don't try to just soak it in massive amounts of water or anything like that. It doesn't really work very well and you'll end up over wetting and it takes forever to dry out. But these two are my backbones of my substrates and I'll just tell you that. The other product I use in a lot of my cages is a long fiber uh, sphagnum or peat moss. And this is, um, you can get it in small blocks at like uh, horticultural stores. I ordered this from a topiary supply store. Those topiaries are those like uh, hedges that they shape into animals and different figurines and things. I get it in a big like 25 pound block. It's cost like $75 and it lasts me like a, like two or three years. I think it's been, uh, I think I ordered that one at the start of pandemics almost again. So uh, this is really good for extra high moisture holding. It holds phenomenal amounts of water. And when you wet it, I like to wet it just to the point where when you're finally at the end of the squeeze, you'll get a little drip out of it. Uh, it's pretty easy to oversaturate it and then it gets real soggy and matted down. But you want to get it to the point where it's just barely when you compress it going to drip a little bit of water out. This is really wonderful either to mix in a little bit on one, in one corner. If you have a rack, it makes a little wet corner for your snakes. Or I also use humid hide boxes in these bigger cages and I'll put coconut and moss in them. And that's where they get their humidity from. So this is more of like um, an accessory substrate, I would say. Uh, but it's very good for that. It's also very good when you have babies. Uh, I put it, put them on this right at the beginning because it's nice and humid and make sure they get great sheds and they're not going to dry out or uh, desiccate or anything like that. So I always like to have long fiber sphagnum moss, also called orchid moss around. And I'm just going to show you something. I don't personally use this for my boas. I use it for my colubrids and some drier species. But I know a lot of people can use aspen bedding on boas and it works for them. And if it works for you, that's great. I think that my ambient conditions are a little too dry uh, for me to use it. So I would end up having to spray it down too much and we get a little bit soggy and whatnot uh, for my higher humidity boas. But plenty of people use an Aspen product uh, on their boas and if it works for them, that's great. And if you want to try it, go ahead and give it a go. I think it might work better somewhere like down south where they have more ambient humidity. So there's just natural humidity rather than um, having to spray it and wet it and get it all soggy down like that. But what I actually do is I mix about 25% um, pelletized wood into it. So you can either use hardwood stove pellets or you can use, um, I use what are called horse stall pellets, which is basically a hardwood stove pellet that has a little bit of an ammonia control in it. Uh, and I mix them together about one part of the pellets, three parts of the shavings by volume and it gets this texture and I use it on a lot of my dryer species, but some people will use that on a bow too. And if it works for you, that's great. Um, but anyways, that's just what I keep in stock. I've gone through a bunch of different ones. Substrate is always a big question for new keepers. Um, and this is just what I've settled on. And I have many different species, uh, many stakes of many different species. And these four substrates control cover all my bases. So that's just what I would tell you. Take care.